Welcome to the Shoreline, brought to you by Shores and Islands, Ohio, the Midwest's hottest vacation destination. I am your host, Jill Bauer, PR manager for Shores and Islands, Ohio, and joining me, as always, is our social media manager, Dayton Barnett. Hey, Dayton. What's up? And we're almost two months into this podcast now, but uh, if you're new to us, if you're new to the pod, our amazing destination is located on Lake Erie between Toledo and Cleveland on Ohio's North Coast. Dayton and I are here to give you the inside scoop on everything happening here in our island and coastal communities and talk about the events and attractions we think you'll want to know more about and hopefully come visit. Uh, Hopefully you're continuing to follow Dayton's adventures on our social media channels. He's always out and about the region uh, visiting our communities, showing you all the hidden gems and, of course, the delicious eateries. And speaking of delicious eateries, today we're talking about a group of amazing food and drink venues in Catawba Island. It's the Orchard family of restaurants. And I know that uh, Dayton has been over there somewhat recently. Uh, What have you been doing over at the Orchard, Dayton? Honestly, um, eating. I've been eating. Uh, (laughs) Specifically the the hot honey pizza. Um, That's honestly all To die for. It's probably my favorite thing there. Uh, but I've I've been stopping over there uh, quite a bit actually. I recently went over there for the Valentine's Day season. I feel like you can call Valentine a, a season at this point. Um, sure, it's not even just a day anymore. Um, <laughs> but I've been over there to the coop. We'll probably talk about that later um, with the seasonal coop that they got going on. Yeah, they had some great Valentine's drinks going on, oh, some yeah. specials, and it was decorated to the nines. There were so many. Like, there, I was actually surprised there were so many like drink options, like new drink options specifically for Valentine's Day. I don't remember which one I had, but I just know it had rosé in it, and it, it was pretty good. Can't be bad. <laughs> Can't be bad. Anything else uh, you've been doing on social media lately, Dayton, that people should be checking out? Yeah, just making sure you're continuing to check out the Dine Local, of course, all of the Eclipse stuff, and just keeping just keeping engaged. Um, I'm always everywhere within the region. We're coming off of Ice Affair and Vermilion this, that we had this past month, yeah. um, going into, honestly, a lot of things. There's so much happening around. I'm all, literally always around the region, so you, you might even see me. You, you likely will see me at some point. <laughs> Absolutely. And you can find him on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. And uh, as he said, you know, be sure to engage, make, make sure you leave comments and uh, let Dayton know where you want to see him go next. So uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to our guest for the day since we're talking about the orchard. Today's guest is here to give us a behind the scenes look at Catawba Island's premier destination, Orchard on Catawba Island. Since joining the brand in 2021, she has played a key role in navigating the organization's rapid growth and expansion, which now boasts a collection of full-service restaurants, bars, shopping, historic apple orchard, peach trees, vineyards, and more. Lately, her work has been instrumental in positioning the brand to soon earn accolades like Ohio's Best Restaurant or Ohio's Best Destination. Recently, she even caught the attention of Chip and Joanna Gaines's Magnolia Network, where Orchard was featured on a series called Road Trip Eats, featuring Chef Megan Mitchell. A Born and raised Lake Erie native, Ohio State University Fisher College of Business graduate and board member for a local chapter of Main Street America, she's dedicated her career to protecting the American dream by focusing on the two often forgotten small business owners. Please welcome Hannah Volk, brand manager for Orchard on Catawba Island. Welcome, Hannah. Hello, everyone. (laughs) Jill and Dayton, I love my days that I have with Shores and Islands, Ohio. You two do so much much for the area. And even as we're winding down February, I feel something we've been talking about here at the Orchard on Catawba Island is how seasonality is almost no longer a thing up here. We're staying busy. We're seeing people more often that come in multiple times a week that maybe just used to come in a couple times a month. And you guys certainly are a huge reason that is for us but you're staying just as busy i'm wondering if in your office you're like oh my gosh it feels like june and it's only february absolutely i mean I, I i agree with that the seasonality is definitely almost a thing of the past we are being busier year round uh, in the region and you guys are one of the only restaurants in in your area over in catawba that is open year round right Yes, we are open daily year round. There's only two days we joke that we are officially closed and that's Thanksgiving and Christmas day. 
understood. Being a family owned and operated business, I can't guarantee you that the family isn't celebrating their own festivities in the restaurant <laughs> themselves. So pretty much knock on the door at any time. And I think someone will be here. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, before we uh, kind of jump into each of the different venues there, give me a little bit of background on the orchard. You mentioned it being a family owned business. Tell us about that family and, and uh, how y'all got started. Yeah. So uh, this upcoming summer, believe it or not, we're celebrating 10 years of the orchard on Catawba Island. Happy anniversary. Yeah, thanks. We're going to have a really fun summer celebrating it. So stay tuned. You know, 10 years ago, it started in 2014 as a small 86 seat restaurant, Orchard Bar and Table. It was actually called Orchard, I believe it was Restaurant and Bar before. And then there was a slight rebrand to Orchard Bar and Table. So the true OG Catawba Island <laughs> residents might remember that. Yeah, 10 years ago, we we had this dream. Uh, the Blumensat family had this dream of bringing big city dining to the small town of Catawba Island. And think back in 2014, this was pre all this residential development that we've seen um, yeah. just really take off. Um, I would say specifically kind of the COVID era, really a catalyst for that where folks were moving out of the cities into their vacation homes, maybe more than just for vacation, maybe yeah. for half the year, or they moved to their vacation homes full time because they realized that way of life was just something they were they were interested in spending more time to. Yeah, absolutely. You know, back then, big city dining to a small town, what does that mean? I mentioned vacation homes here. If you go on vacation, you have a second home, or you live in Chicago, or you live in the Cleveland Metro, or Columbus, we see so many people from Cincinnati you don't want to just settle for pizza and burger and wings and beer at every restaurant you go to. <laughs> we have enough of that. <laughs> yeah, you, we, we do offer that for guests who want that, and we have some great quality. I don't want to say just pizza. You might want a, a glass, a nice glass of Cabernet with your prime steak. Uh, you might want a lobster tail or some fresh seafood, right? Temperatures get hot, some crisp white wine and fresh seafood. So that was really our niche that we wanted to establish. And I think we did that really well. Uh, we opened in July. Who? What restaurant opens in July on the shores and islands? It's like <laughs> anyone who had already been established here as a business owner is looking at from afar and laughing at you, thinking that you're going <laughs> to just open a business in July on Catawba Island. It worked. <laughs> yeah, it worked. And before you know it, there was a large expansion to add the, call it old patio now. We, we've since kind of reconstructed Orchard Bar and Table and what that looks like for guests. That, that patio won us accolades like, best patio dining in the area and in Ohio. And it really became something that people loved to sit and lounge and they looked forward to. So multiple years in 2018, 2019 time, there's a bunch of land around the orchard bar and table. And think back, that was a strip mall, right? Now it looks a little bit different. It's like a dentist's office or something, wasn't it? Yeah, there was a art gallery in the center. There was a dental office. It didn't have that curb appeal per se, and we were tucked in there. But nonetheless, a really important moment happened in, in us establishing there. And then in 2018 and 19, uh, the land was for sale kind of around the restaurant, which included a historic apple orchard that had since been abandoned for about 12 years. And certainly the name orchard pays homage to that apple orchard that sure. was already on the property or near the property rather. So in buying that orchard, rehabbing it, really that land was bought because we needed more parking, right? We had so much success, <laughs> we needed more parking space. So that's a good problem to have. But then, you know, 2020 happened. Restaurants were not considered essential businesses in the state of Ohio, which is such a fascinating thing to me, considering I have almost 15 years in hospitality and food and beverage. I think the stat is somewhere around like 80% of food consumption in the United States comes from restaurants. So how it's considered not- Not essential, yeah. I guess 80% of meals are not essential. I don't know. But at that moment, we had just purchased, the family just purchased all this land and it, the livelihood, right? Family owned and operated. So what do we do? Well, like true entrepreneurs that uh, Bill and Nikolai and their families are, they said, well, we're going to build something that is essential. And that was the birth of Orchard Farm Stand. Farm Stand, now okay. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, seven days a week. Farm Stand is a bit more of our casual concept. The cafe offers 
applewood fire pizzas. I know you're talking about the hot honey and pepperoni pizza. That is so delicious. Definitely one of my favorites. Sandwiches, um, a, sort of a collection of, of different grab and go items. And so that served a different purpose for us. And really that was what I call our COVID baby that ended up being <laughs> a huge cornerstone in our new blossoming brand that we were no longer just orchard bar and table. We were the orchard on Catawba Island and we had multiple venues that you could dine in yeah. for different occasions. And we've added so much since then, the coop, which I'm excited to talk about. And then of course, the past 18 months, we've done a huge expansion and renovation on orchard bar and table when we purchased that whole building where the art gallery and the dental office was um had first yeah. a refusal on that building and purchased that and and so now we're kind of to this place where we have in total about 24 acres of property with two full service restaurants we currently have three bars on property and behind the scenes like you mentioned we'll have five come this summer uh, so we'll be adding two new areas to sip on cocktails or some wine nice this this year and a lot more to come. I don't think we have any plans of slowing down anytime soon. I joke about our three to five year plan when we sit in strategy meetings, because if you were to ask what we thought would be now three years ago, we would think we're crazy. So right. <laughs> no idea is too far fetched. And I think that's what really keeps the orchard exciting and why we dedicated ourselves to having something new for locals and people who look forward to vacationing here about every six months or every year. We like to have something new to keep the, our customer base engaged while also just kind of continuing to do what we think is cool. <laughs> well, it's working for you. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, as entrepreneurs, we're just doing what we want to do and it seems to all be working well for us. So, uh, that's the fun part and what it allows me to not feel like I'm at work every day because I am able to just kind of live out my, what ifs we did this and wouldn't it be cool if we did this? And then we have complete creative control here to do what we want. And we're so fortunate. We have the world's best guests that come here. Some people who come here multiple times a week, they really have sort of become part of the Orchard family. Oh, well, it is such an incredible success story. Uh, you know, let, let's kind of circle back to, you called it the OG, right? The original restaurant, the the bar and table, and talk about that expansion. You mentioned just briefly that you've recently expanded that space. Now, the dining concept, the main concept still kind of remains the same with steak, seafood, handcrafted cocktails, uh, an elevated warm atmosphere. But what have you added? What are the additional amenities that just make it such an amazing place? I mean, just besides the jaw dropping interior design, which we've worked with a woman, her name's Chris Etzel out of uh, Northeast Ohio. She's really talented. She's kind of co-collaborated with our owner, Bill, on that. New to Orchard Bar and Table, we still have that same fine dining in a casual atmosphere. Steaks, fresh seafood, we've added a sushi and raw bar. So we are super excited about that. That's really cool. There's not a lot of that in, in this part of the state. <laughs> No, there's not. And, and, you know, we joke, it's like there's Ohio sushi and then there's like ocean sushi, right? So Ohio <laughs> sushi is, I, I think we all can probably understand what that might be. But, you know, we're working with a, a Japanese sushi chef who is traditionally trained and has done even more time in some really cool, trendy spots like San Diego and in Arizona, working alongside chefs who have trained at Nobu, which, you know, is world renowned for their sushi and raw bar. So we we are super excited to offer that new feature at our raw bar and it's going to be great when you're sitting on our new patio so another part of orchard bar and table that we haven't even been able to really use yet since we're still in the winter time but yeah would be a little chilly right now <laughs> yeah a little chilly don't worry there's been a bunch of fire pits and if you just feel like it's kind of standing out there maybe but yeah we have this beautiful new patio that wraps around our entire bar lounge area and in our bar lounge area we have these kind of california accordion doors that act as uh, window doors that act as the wall so those will open up completely and it will be just a really seamless indoor outdoor experience 
with lots of lush custom landscaping. We work with Barnes Nursery here locally. They're great mm -hmm. partners for us. Lots of water features. I think right now we have three or four water fountains that are already ready to go for summer uh, with a river that's going through them. And sneak peek, we're going to have a, a vineyard bar that's over top the river. So when you're How sitting cool. at the, the bar stool, the river is running underneath you. So that's really fun. We're excited to look forward to that. So, so much new. I think what's important with this expansion is that we're staying true to our roots, right? Big city dining in the small town and always trying to be better. We do not cut any corners on quality. We expect absolutely pristine service from our staff. But at the same time, we're built in a voter community. So no dress code. You don't have to wear a suit and tie or a jacket. You don't have to have pants on. That's great to point out. <laughs> yeah, we're here for someone who maybe just got off their boat and wants to go get a, a filet Oscar and a nice glass of cab, you know, doesn't want to get all frilled up for the, the fancy dinner. So, But you can. It's also, it's also definitely the kind of establishment where you could get dressed up. It's a special occasion uh, place for sure. I mean, I would definitely look at it as some place that you could go to celebrate an anniversary or for a romantic night out. I mean, it's it's definitely an elevated experience all around. Now, speaking of like the, the menu items there, you mentioned you've got the main dining room area, you've got the lounge area, you've got the sushi and raw bar. Are there different menus in each location or is it the same menu throughout? So we offer the same menu throughout the entire restaurant and we anticipate doing that for the patio this summer and fall season. There will be some kind of nuances, of course, between our dinner menu and our lunch menu. Right now we're doing lunch on Saturdays, but we anticipate offering lunch at Orchard Bar and Table maybe even seven days a week come summertime, but definitely through the weekend. And then we have our Sunday brunch that people have come to love with our do-it-yourself Bloody Mary bar and mimosas and lobster benedict and biscuits and gravy and all the good things. So a little bit of nuances, of course, in those menus for the different occasions. And then we've announced uh, a great $5 happy hour. So at Orchard Bar and Table, we have $5 mixers, $5 glasses of Orchard wine, $5 craft beers, $3 domestics, and then some $10 appetizers that we offer for happy hour between 4 and 6, Monday through Friday. So that's really fun to come. It's yeah. Of our locals are like, thanks so much for offering happy hour on a Friday. And of course, we're going <laughs> to offer happy you, hour yeah. on a Friday. We want you to enjoy your weekend. We're excited you're here. So it's definitely an, an elevated dining experience and an elevated menu, but it's not necessarily an elevated price. You can definitely still find some value items there, right? Absolutely. So let's let's uh, pivot to your other venues, the, the other uh, spots that you have there on your property. Let's talk about Orchard Farm and Table a little bit and then the coop. These are my favorite spots. I mean, I guess. Uh, these are places probably I visit the most. I've definitely stopped over at the, the bar and table. And we actually just recently uh, just posted a video about that just about a couple of weeks ago to get some glimpse of it. It's it's beautiful inside. Um, it's quite amazing it, walking through, especially in the summer. Like I can only just anticipate like how beautiful it's going to look, especially at night. That's one of the things I really like about um, the entire the entire place is that it looks really cool at night, especially with the lights outside. And of course, the water features in the fireplaces. It's going to be amazing. But yeah, so we got. We got these two sections. I, w what's going on over there? Yeah, Orchard Farm Stand. That, like I said, that was our COVID baby that kind of <laughs> turned in its, into its own thing. Um, so initially started, if you're familiar, just where the retail shop is, the little gift shop, rather. That was the initial Orchard Farm Stand. And it was roadside, had lots of fresh produce and coffee and pastries and some shopping in there. And that opened in June or July of 2020. And then it was such a success that quickly we realized we need to expand this operation. So we added the farm stand, the full bar, a lot of the outdoor patio dining, which opened by August of 2021. And today we're serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. We have some amazing espresso bar and coffee items. We've kind of become known for our uh, honey bees, honey and lavender oat latte, which is just so delicious. And of course, we 
make seasonal coffee drinks as uh, the seasons are changing. But yeah, that's a bit more casual for us. Our applewood fire pizzas, our prime smash burgers. We have some great sandwiches. Our hits are like our turkey club. It's like the best of turkey club because it's just simple and great ingredients. We have our signature ham and hot peach, which has our hot catawba peach jelly that we sell in the store on it. So it's like spicy habanero jalapeno peach sweetness uh, which we also make in our signature margarita that you can find everywhere on property our, our hot catawba peach margarita so the farm stands a lot of fun i think people come here for a quick bite for lunch for business meetings or they're bringing their kiddos in for pizza and i think that's the thing that you know maybe orchard bar and table had a reputation for being that special occasion like you mentioned jill or being the girls night out or mom and dad's date night but the opening in the farm stand kind of unlocked a new piece of the business for us it's so family friendly and we're seeing a lot more families enjoying a meal together around the table which you know as a family owned and operated business is kind of the best thing for us to see and the patio over here is so beautiful in the summer live music daily and you're overlooking about a thousand grape vines that have been planted we have concord and niagara grapes growing on property here so it really is just an oasis so many people have mentioned they're like it, it feels like i'm in napa valley and i'm on Catawba mm -hmm. Island in Ohio, which is the best compliment you can get, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, it really does have like a great dynamic over there. And it, and it's awesome to like we guys were talking about earlier, like it's awesome to have the kind of the switch up of different spaces that you can get into, you know, having a, a comfy type, you know, relaxed area, but also having a nice dining area. I, I've utilized them all. So it, it's really been nice. Right behind all of that, we got the coop. There's always mm -hmm. some fun stuff going on over there. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, the coop. Man, I remember the day that Bill looked at me and says, Hannah, I am going to build a chicken coop and I'm going to put a bar in it. And I looked at him and I said, that is going to smell so bad. What are you thinking? <laughs> and I'm eating my words at this point because it is such a home run. It's such a success. People have the best time there. And adding the farm stand was one level of seeing people kind of enjoy more than just dinner on property but the coop certainly has put us almost in this category where we're now a destination and you can come here for breakfast lunch and dinner you can have a couple cocktails you can go shopping you can spend the whole day here and i love seeing uh people go to the coop which is our, our premium spirits higher end cocktails uh, we have cigars available uh, when that all opens up into sort of like an indoor outdoor bar experience with again more lush gardens and more water features you can hear the live entertainment from the farm stand it's like an adult playground here i swear <laughs> in the sense that people are getting a, a before dinner cocktail after dinner cocktail and people are kind of hitting every venue they're almost doing like their own sort of crawl across our property with all the different areas. And I think one thing that makes it really fun is each of our bars has a different cocktail menu. So you don't have that repetitive, you know, menu. You can get something new everywhere you go. We're using fresh local ingredients. We're really proud. Emily Hensley, our beverage director, she was a bartender with us for years and years before being promoted into that role. And she she takes it very seriously. And that, I like that. Using fresh ingredients that are in season and making all of our simple syrups in-house and just not using sugary juices and not using sour mixes from a gun and really putting the craft or the handcraft back in handcrafted cocktails. Um, I think that term sometimes might get thrown around too easily. And, and truly our cocktails, you're, you're paying for the quality and you're paying for, it didn't come out of a, a jug or a, out of you know, a soda gun. It, you're paying for someone put a minute or two into making that cocktail just for you. Yeah, that's actually, yeah. I've had them and they're, they're really good, really tasteful. It's kind of unrelated but i actually didn't even know like the coop like there's an actual chicken coop back there until like maybe my third time like on the property oh yeah really so it's so funny those chickens there are actual chickens we have about a dozen and they they do lay eggs for us and we use those eggs for um i don't know if you guys are familiar with cocktails that are sours like a bourbon sour or a gin sour um, you take the egg white from that cocktail and you basically dry shake it and it adds like a protein and it makes the drink really smooth and creamy. It's, it's 
it's science. I mean, mixology is a whole witchcraft in itself in some sense. But yeah, we use those those eggs from the coop on our property. And um, those chickens will perform for people. They, when we first opened the coop back, it would have been May of 2022. We opened and the chickens were a little overwhelmed by the amount of people. And now they are so socialized and they will talk with people and they, dogs come up to them and they will like look at dogs and dogs love looking at them and kids love seeing the chickens. And it's so cute to see mom and dad get their coffee uh, on a Sunday in, in the summertime and the kids are running back to the coop. So um, they, they've really become like our informal mascot, I guess, these wild chickens we have. <laughs> The so with the coop now got your everyday thing, but I think some of the really eye catching stuff right now is the seasonal stuff you guys got going on. Seasonal in the holidays, you guys switch it up a lot, and it's mm-hmm. really cool. And you guys have to check it out on on socials, especially theirs. But if you haven't seen them, like they switch up the the coop and decorations like full on everything from from Mm -hmm. the menu to the decorations it's it's amazing can you tell us about that yeah so and it's so funny dayton because the first time we did a themed coop or like a pop-up bar so we did christmas coop it would have was two christmases ago and we there was no big strategy meeting about that there was no big timeline we just said we want to do it and so we did it and we were catawba island's first and only christmas bar we still are which is so fun because it keeps people engaged in the off season you, you mentioned how you just celebrated ice affair and vermilion and you know there's so many activities going around year round in the in the shores and islands ohio region and we're really happy to kind of contribute to that so we've decided we do a spooky coop it's called to celebrate halloween we have our christmas coop we are just wrapping up our valentine's day coop here. It's a season of love. And then we look forward to changing here. Um, On March 1st, we will have the uh, Leopard Coop, which is a St. Patrick's Day themed pop-up bar. Uh, And then of course, for summertime, we'll go back to business as usual, but there's nothing ordinary about the coop in any sense. (laughs) Not at all. Yeah. That's that's exactly, I think what I like about it most is that those being that you guys are one of, I mean, probably the only, as far as I know, I, I don't know any other bars that are decorating and have the quality and, and to you guys' extent when it comes to those seasonal, um, those seasonal setups. And I think that's, that's just a great thing to have to keep pulling people here. It's, it's eye catching. People love to see it and it's, it's continuing to keep people here. And it's just an addition to the year round, just the year round, um, overall, just, I don't know, success of the region. Absolutely. I, I would concur. And I think that the, the things that the coop is doing uh, with these pop-up bars. It's called the Leprecoop for March. Yeah, like a leprechaun, the Leprecoop. <laughs> I mean, not only is it going to be, I'm sure, going to be green everywhere and, and clovers and all of that, you're going to have some special drinks and some things that you can only find at the coop, right? Yeah, things that you'll only be able to find for a couple of weeks at the coop. So definitely plan your trip. If you are a big fan of St. Patrick's Day, you have the luck of the Irish on your side, <laughs> uh, be sure to plan your trip to come to Catawba Island because you won't find anything like it in the area. Absolutely. You mentioned um, that it's going to be your 10 year anniversary in 2024. What other, I mean, I know you're going to be celebrating that, obviously. What other big events do you guys host over there? I know you host some festivals and things that, you know, draw even more people in for special events. What kind of things do you have planned for this year? So on the last weekend in September, every year we have our harvest fest so our harvest festival celebrates the harvest of our land so catawba island has a super rich history of growing and farming red haven peach trees apple trees growing grapes just growing any sort of seasonal produce i mean our our property uh, the Rothkar family had owned it all the way back to the 1800s. And when, when Bill and Nikolai and their families purchased the property in 2018 or 19, um, the title for that property hadn't transferred since the 1800s. Think about that. That's really a, a, a pillar in our brand of here at the Orchard on Catawba Island of certainly eat, sip, shop, 
is kind of our slogan, but nourishment and the historic preservation of the ways of life on Catawba Island are also very important to us. So in celebrating Harvest Festival, again, that's the last weekend of September every year, we celebrate you know, our harvest from those apple trees that have been here for centuries and our Red Haven peaches. And at that time in September, the air just smells like the Concord grapes on our vines. Mm-hmm. And it is so delicious and it's so fun to just kind of pop out and do some you pick grapes or you pick apples or peaches. And of course, we're just incorporating those flavors all across our cocktail menus and our food menus and having stuff available to to buy and take home. So that is always something I look forward to as kind of the start of the fall season for us. All right. That's a lot. That's a lot of information we got going on. If you could tell us, where, so where can everybody find all of this information, you know, for the for the orchard? Yeah. So uh, head to our website, orchardoncatawba.com. We have lots of information listed there. You can reserve a table. You can view all of our menus for both restaurants and each of our bars. Um, we have a blog on there called uh, Off the Vine Blog. You can learn a little bit more about the behind the scenes. If you like what you're hearing today, you can learn more there. Our live entertainment calendar is on our website. We have live entertainment daily in the summertime. And even here in, in the, I put air quotations off season, because I don't necessarily believe in the off season. And yeah, agreed. I don't, we need to stop calling it that. <laughs> yeah, what should we call it? We should just coin a new phrase. It's just the uh, cold season, maybe. Um, and it's not always cold. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. The sun is shining today. It's a beautiful day. So uh, I guess the groundhog did see his shadow, right? Which means in early spring. Spring is coming. (laughs) Spring is coming. It's, I think, below 90 days at this point. So um, yeah, orchardoncatawba.com. You can also follow us. We have Orchard Bar and Table on Facebook and Instagram. We have Orchard Farm Stand on Facebook and Instagram. We have two accounts there. And then uh, kind of a tease, I think if you're, you're liking what you're hearing, we're growing again here in 2024 and something great is going to bloom. So uh, more to come. Ooh, that was a little Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Anything else that you wanted to add today, Hannah? No, I think, uh, you know, if you're listening to the, the, the Shores and Islands podcast, you're already kind of someone who would love to visit the orchard if you've never been to Catawba Island. You don't have to take a ferry to come to Catawba, not like South Bass Island or Kelly's Island. Right. Just a simple car ride. We're about an hour west of Cleveland, an hour east of Toledo. We're here. We're open daily for you. And and we love to treat our guests kind of just like the orchard is an extension of our home. Everyone's welcome. If you're looking, listening to this podcast, looking for employment, we have about 100 to 120 people employed year round. Those numbers increase to you know upwards of 250 when we're in the, the warm summertime season. So we're a great place to expand and continue your hospitality and culinary profession. And, and we're hiring. We're, we're actively hiring. Definitely a lot of opportunities available. And, and folks, you heard the invite. Hannah is inviting you to come and visit. As she mentioned, Catawba Island's kind of a misnomer, not really an island. We do have some islands here in the Shores and Islands region, but uh, Catawba is actually a peninsula kind of connected to the mainland. So easy to get to. You can get there year round. Uh, and we should probably let folks know how to spell Catawba, especially if you're looking for that website. So it's C A T A W. B-A, Catawba. So uh, special thanks to Hannah Volk, of course. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you to course, Hannah from The Orchard. Of course. It was so great talking to you today. And uh, folks, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so that you don't miss a minute of the action here in Shores and Islands, Ohio. You can find more information, including past episodes of the podcast online at shoresandislands.com. And we'll see you next time on the shoreline. And Dayton and I will see you at the coop. Oh, yeah. Plot twist. I'm actually sitting on the patio right now eating. Oh, (laughs) yeah. It's five o'clock somewhere for (laughs) Dayton. Thanks, guys.